in essence, what Foundation Medicine's aim is to, and what we're doing, in fact, is, is, is taking what, um, what Jose described in terms of this precision medicine initiative and the work that uh, is going on at the academic centers around the United States. Our aim is to really democratize it, not at the expense or not at the competition, not to be competitive with the academic centers, but let's face it, 85% of patients in the United States never end up at Memorial Sloan Kettering at, 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 at Cornell, Will Cornell. They don't end up at MD Anderson. They are treated in the communities around the United States. So that's, that's an important component to understand. And where Harold started out by talking about the diagnosis is essential. That is the starting point. That's really what, we're, what we are all working on up here. But don't think about diagnosis in the context of diagnostics anymore. Just think about it in the context of information. All the research is really dedicated to, towards generating new insight into cancer. What we do as a company is we try to extract the relevant genomic drivers from each patient's cancer when cancer centers and pharmaceutical companies and oncologists and pathologists from all around the world send those, send those tissue specimens to us. But we extract information. And from that information, we're all building these databases that have to come together, and they should absolutely not just come together inside my company or inside a medical center or elsewhere. They have to truly come together over time, because what we all have to do is take, you know, we're talking about very, very narrow definitions in terms of a patient's diagnosis going forward. They, they are all, not quite snowflakes, but it is the snowflake theory. The only way you can start to understand that is if you really combine learning from the West Coast and from the Southeast and from New York City and from Boston and from Hong Kong, because you're going to see patients with these snow that are these snowflakes, tumors represented as snowflakes all over the world. And even the experts at some of the major cancer centers might not have seen enough of any one patient diagnosis to know exactly how to respond to that, you know, to know exactly what to do with that patient. That, that issue is magnified many times over in the communities around the United States. I'm gonna walk through a case, a patient case that, um, that we discussed at our board meeting last week. And it starts actually back in the fall of 2013 with a Nature Medicine publication. It was a publication, I'm sorry, no, no New York institutions, but we've, done, we've collaborated with many New York institutions, but it's the Dana-Farber University of Colorado and Foundation Medicine. We identified a novel gene fusion, an NTRAC fusion, in a patient that was diagnosed with widely metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. Based on that, University of Colorado, taking some input from Dana-Farber, Treated the patient, uh, treated the patient with a with a poor NTRAC inhibitor. I won't go into the specific into the specific compound. That patient had a partial and short-lasting response, which might have been expected based on the based on the, the this particular inhibitor, this particular therapeutic. But it did give, it did give it some insight into the investigator that this is a patient with widely metastatic disease, who just responded based on a novel gene fusion that had never been seen before. November 2013. September 2014, a patient is treated by a group oncology practice in Oregon. This patient was diagnosed, she's a 42-year-old mother with, uh, with a large thigh mass. It ends up being a rare sarcoma, soft tissue sarcoma. She went on the routine chemotherapy, no targeted therapy in initially. She did not respond. She then went through a very wide excision for that, saw, for, for that sarcoma. She was then put back on a chemotherapy. Two months later, her lungs lit up and she had widely metastatic disease. You know, this is, this is uh, the, the, the CT scan and the PET scans are remarkable, what happened over the course of two months. That tissue was sent to our company late last year, could have been sent to one of the other institutions around, around uh, New York as well. We identified that same novel fusion, that NTRAC fusion again. Fortunately, somebody on our medical team saw it, reached out to the oncologist at Oregon, said, you know, based on this Nature Medicine correspondence back in 2013, University of Colorado actually opened up a clinical trial for these NTRAC fusions with different NTRAC inhibitors, and we also know they're seeing some, you know, they're seeing some meaningful response. Colorado connected with the oncologist in Oregon, that patient ended up getting on an NTRAC inhibitor. If we had a slide, if I could show you the slide, over the course of three months, you would see her cancer melt away. Now, 
There will almost certainly be resistance at some, time, at some point, but this was one compound based on that N-TRAC fusion, which no one even knew about two years ago, and in a little bit over 12 months, we went from the identification of a fusion to a, you know, to a class of inhibitors that may work or may not work. We built the evidence, and then about 14 months later, a patient was treated with one of these drugs and had an exceptional response, which will hopefully go in the Exceptional Responders Initiative down at, uh, at the NCI as well. So it points to the promise of what everybody is doing, but it also points to the challenges. If that information stayed at University of Colorado, if it stayed at Foundation Medicine, it stayed at Dana, if it only stayed at Dana-Farber, if that patient didn't get connected from Oregon, I think we all know what the outcome could have, could have, you know, would have been. So what we have to do next is take the learnings from Silicon Valley, frankly, and you know, let's learn from everything that's happening in the information age, and let's not rest until the data coming out of Mark's lab, the data coming out of Jose's institution, and our company, and the Cancer Genome Atlas, and the NCI is all connected. That's ultimately what has to happen here in order to really pinpoint these, uh, you know, these findings and match them up in an N of one, N of one basis with, uh, you know, with, with the therapeutic options.